girl Amaya Moore and I'm back with another video. Um, today's video is gonna just be me giving you guys the whole spiel of why I left Seton Hall to transfer to Morgan State University. Before I get into this video, I want you guys to like, comment, and hit that subscribe button. I will really appreciate it. I appreciate all the support. Alright, so let's get into the video. Okay, so... First things first, let me just give a little background information. Seton Hall University is in New Jersey, where I'm from. Morgan State University is in Baltimore, Maryland. I graduated high school in the summer of 2018, well, May to June 2018, and I went to Seton Hall in August, and I did one whole year. I finished my fall and spring semester. May 2019, I was done. When I was applying for colleges, truth be told, I didn't look that deep into the whole college situation. I applied to two schools, Rutgers, New Brunswick, and Seton Hall. I was gun ho that I did not want to go out of state. Nobody could convince me. I wanted to stay close to home, and I was that. Had I went to Rutgers, I would have dormed. But since I went to Seton Hall, which was 10 minutes away from where I lived, I was like, it's no point in dorming, and you know, financially... It just didn't make sense because anybody who knows about Seton Hall knows that their tuition is mad crazy and their room and board is even crazier. So, I mean, they're a private school and it's a Catholic school. So, I mean, I guess that's why it's so expensive. The reason why I chose to go there is because not only was it in-state and close to home, but it had a good nursing program. And I am a nursing major and that's what I was looking for, like a good nursing program in New Jersey. So what happened with Rutgers is that Rutgers waitlisted me and at the time during that little waiting process, Seton Hall sent me my decision letter and they was offering me a lot of money. And like I said, Seton Hall is expensive. So being as though they were offering me so much money and I was like, oh, the amount that would have to come out of pocket is, you know, not that bad. So that's where I decided to go. Did I want to go out of state at the time? No, like I refused. I was not ready to leave from home, but clearly times have changed. So I feel like everything happens for a reason and that God's timing is perfect. And clearly where I'm at right now in my life is where I'm supposed to be. When I decided to go to Seton Hall, I did know that Seton Hall was a PWI, all right? A PWI is a predominantly white institution. I knew that it was a PWI, but I didn't know what it would actually feel like going to a PWI as a minority black student until I actually attended. Like once I attended, I really felt what it felt like to be in that environment. And I'm not racist or anything, nothing, nothing close. But I've grown up around black people all my life, whether it be family, my friends, my cheerleading team, all those different things. So it was new for me. And you know, sometimes you do have to be in uncomfortable or new situation in order to grow, I get that. But it was making me be at a disadvantage in a sense. Like it wasn't just, oh, just become accustomed to it. It was like, I don't fit in here. I feel like an outcast. I don't want to be here. It was that kind of feeling. And it was nothing against the school because it was my choice to go there. You know, it was my decision. <coughs> So like I said, I went. The first couple weeks, I wasn't complaining, you know, because I'm like, you know, I gotta get, you know, gotta get to know people. There's a couple people I don't know this down the third. Like I said, I was a commuter. So being a commuter, mixed with being at a PWI, mixed with me being slightly introverted, that's just not a good combination. Like being a commuter, I am not as involved and active on campus. It's like I go to class and there will be times when I chill on campus, but sometimes I want to go home and take a nap. Just like people who do live on campus, they get to go to their dorms and take a nap. But if there's an event going on later that night, they could still be there. Me, it's like, do I want to drive home and then drive back? And even though it's not a far drive, you know what it feels like when you're just tired and just don't feel like driving. So I would have those issues. So I would miss out on certain things. I try to come on campus for things that like I really wanted to be there for. But being a commuter is just like I wasn't seeing everything that was going on. Then, like I said, it being a PWI, there were few black students there. They were very far and few. And because I wasn't staying on campus, I really didn't see them that much. I was probably cool with like one or two, but 
it wasn't any like major major like friendship honestly well actually we were friends we were cool it was cool but yeah and then me being slightly introverted meaning i don't really put myself out there that much like i'm social when i am comfortable like once i'm comfortable in a situation like i'm very observant in new situations new environments i observe things I stay a little reserved until I'm not. Like, once I feel that, like, trigger, like, okay, you can open up. This is cool. I do. And once I open up, I open up. But in the beginning, I'm a little reserved, and that's just who I am. So me being that kind of person at a PWI and being a commuter, it just really wasn't working. I let a fur the first couple weeks go by. And then I was like, you know what? Maybe in order to, like, feel comfortable here and, like, get involved... I should join the cheerleading team because I have been a cheerleader for 14 years. Well, at the time that I was a freshman in college, now it's been 15 years. But I was a cheerleader for 14 years. I was like, this is the perfect opportunity to find my way in. I feel like when you join sports, that's your perfect way into any situation. So I did and I made the team and I was the only black girl on the team, and truth be told, I want to kind of save this discussion for another video. I don't want to get too much into depth about it, but long story short, trials were in September, and the first week of September, and I did quit in November. I did quit the cheerleading team, and it just wasn't for me, and like I said, I'm just going to go into details about that in another video. So stay tuned for that. So once I left the cheerleading team, I just like really, you know, I, I kind of was just like a little just being at the school. Like commuting, going to class, going home, going to class, going home, sit on campus in between classes, studying, doing homework. Da, da, da. Maybe go to a little event on the field, on the green, the stand at third. But other than that, I was just around. That fall semester, I had decided, I think I want to transfer. I was looking into schools. I was looking into Georgia State. I was looking into Montclair State. I was looking into Rutgers. Mind you, I said Georgia State. At this point, I was becoming a little optimistic about the idea of leaving home. I was like, maybe I can do it. I remember calling Rutgers and they were like, they're tra the only transfer students as as a nursing major. In order to transfer into their nursing program, I think you have to already be an RN trying to get your bachelor's. So off the bat, mm, just X that out of the equation. Then Montclair State. I remember them calling me and telling me that they didn't give scholarships to transfer students. And I was like, I am very smart. My grades are really good. I'm not going to a school that's not giving me any kind of scholarship. No way, no, no, no. X that out the equation. Then, Georgia State. They were like, oh, you got to do an admissions test. You got to get accepted into the school first and then apply for the nursing program. And when you apply for the nursing program, you got to take a test to get in there. And I was just like, oh, why should I do all that when I'm already in a nursing program? Seton Hall, I got accepted into the nursing program off jump. Sent my high school transcripts, sent my SAT scores, they accepted me in. I didn't have to take any nursing, T's, tests, I didn't have to do that. So I was like, I'm scared to lose my spot in a nursing program and go to another school and possibly not make it. So truth be told, I just let the whole idea go. I stopped trying to transfer, I let it go, and I was just like, you know what? This is going to be my life, this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to just deal with the situation at hand and graduate in four years I'm in school for a degree for an education and that's that F the social aspect that's really what it had come down to that's what my mentality became I just want to say academically I flourished at Seton Hall I would have had a 4.0 as my cumulative GPA but in my fall semester I got an A minus in my sociology class but I got A's in every other class. And then spring semester, I got all A's. I actually got a 4.0 spring semester and I think like a 3.9 in the fall semester. So overall, it's 3.97. Once again, academically at Flourish, they have a great nursing program. I won't ever knock them for that. Great curriculum, very good, prestigious school. I'll never knock them for that. I finish out the fall semester. I go in for the spring semester. 
spring semester is a little better i guess because like once the weather starts kind of getting warm you kind of just have like a new little vibe you know but it was the same i still was disconnected from the school I, when i tell you i just couldn't connect like i tried i really did i really did i'm i'm not it's not like i sat down and just made excuses you know i tried to join clubs but there's not even many clubs that's like dedicated to black people and the ones that were i just wasn't that interested in like what they stood for you know that's just just wasn't my kind of thing i just wasn't it just was hard like, so i just carried out the semester did what i had to do and i had to go i mean i was cool with people in class like i was but like outside of class we really didn't speak much so i didn't count that as a friend really that's the whole spiel of my experience at Seton Hall. I couldn't connect deep down in my heart. I didn't really want to be there. But at the same time, I didn't want to take that risk of transferring because it's a risk. It's a risk to take. And I wasn't ready to take it. So I just let it go. Summer comes. I'm enjoying my summer. Da -da -da. I'm planning on going back to Seton Hall in the fall because, you know, like I said, I was just going to carry out my four years and get my bachelor's and become a nurse. Now it's going to be that. August comes. It's time to go back to school. I go to school for the first week. I was coming home literally right after my classes. Like, seriously. And my mom would be like, why are you home so early? I'd be like, because I don't just, I will be like, mom, I just, I don't really have no interest in being there. And there was this other, it was this black girl who I was friends with. And she used to say to me the same thing. Like, she would go to class and she did. You know, like, it just wasn't the vibe. Like, that, that, <coughs> like I said, it's nothing to knock Seton Hall because they are a PWI. It's almost like going to an HBCU and expecting it to be 100% dedicated to white students. That's just not what it is. That's not what they stand for. So I can't be mad that Seton Hall was this way. You know, although they promote and emphasize diversity and inclusion, it's not that diverse. Like, it's really not. And it's just not, you know, just like HBCUs aren't that that diverse. But you can't knock them for that because that's what they're meant for. Like, they are meant to be an HBCU. That's that. Uh, oh, any student can come in, but prom, it's going to, blacks are going to dominate. That's the prominent race there because that's what that school is for. That's their tradition. You know what I'm saying? So I can't knock Seton Hall for being the way it was. All I can say is I just realized it wasn't for me. So my mom would be like, you're transferring. She said that. That first week I came home, she was like, you're transferring. And at first she said it in a jokingly way. And I was just like, mm hmm. And then literally an hour after I went up to my room. And I was on the laptop, like, HBCU nursing programs. Because at this point, I was in a new mind state. Not the same mind state that I, that I was in when I was a freshman coming out of high school. I now was like, I don't mind going out of state. I've experienced what college is like for one year. And I'm okay with going out of state now. I'm okay with leaving the nest, you know? I'm okay with leaving home. I'm ready. And because I realized that my problem at Seton Hall was being that minority student. I was like, I just want to be around more black people. Like, I just love HBCUs. I love what they stand for. And the reason why I did not go on to go to one from jump is because I was not ready to go out of state and like majority of them are out of state. I actually don't even know any that's in New Jersey. So that's when I was looking up schools and I found the two that like I really had in my head was Howard and Morgan. And I was looking bo into both of them. I realized that Morgan's tuition was cheaper. And I saw that, you know, Morgan had a cheerleading team, which I actually knew about because I know cheerleaders who have cheered for Morgan. And that was something that meant a lot to me. Like having a nursing program and having a good cheer team, you know, I hear about Morgan's cheer team. I know, I know they're good and that meant a lot to me because it has always been my dream to be a college cheerleader. I've been a cheerleader all my life. Of course, I want to continue to be a cheerleader. It's just at Seton Hall, 
it just didn't work for me. Morgan's cheer team, you know, they're just so dope. And I pray, I pray, I pray that I get to be on there. You know, Morgan is gonna be what it is. So that's when I kind of just X Howard out the equation. Like I said, it was nothing wrong with Howard. It's just their tuition is more expensive. And I just like Morgan's cheerleading. So Morgan, Morgan, Morgan. That was where I would end up putting all my eggs into one basket. I literally, within I, the next day after I decided I was gonna be going to Morgan, and that's where I wanted to go, my mom said to me, so what are you gonna do? I said, I'm gonna finish this fall semester at Senior Hall and then transfer in the spring. She's like, why? She was like, why even waste your time? You could possibly be gaining credits at Seton Hall that aren't even gonna transfer. Why waste your money? And I said, you're right. The next day, I went to Seton Hall. I said, I'm requesting a withdrawal form. Within two days, it was done. It was done. Financial aid was canceled. Everything was canceled. My enrollment was canceled. Dropped all my classes. Returned my laptop. Returned everything I needed to return to that school. Everything was done. And I was a student who wasn't enrolled. And all I kept saying was, let's just get accepted into Morgan. You know, because right now I'm putting all my eggs into one basket. I um, applied to Morgan. Even though that was like a long process because it was like a lot going on with their system. I applied, ended up applying. And just recently, actually, I finally got my acceptance letter. Um, well, I got a PDF version of it because they mail it out in December. But I accepted. I've confirmed my enrollment. And that's basically that. Like, I am so excited. I All I can say from this journey, my best advice to give is that if you want change in your life, you need to go find it. You cannot make excuses and complain about the things in your life if you are able to change them and you're not changing them. And that's what I realized. I realized that while I was making the excuse about, oh, I don't wanna have to go through the transfer process, I don't wanna have to take an admissions test for another nursing school, I was making those excuses, but all it was doing was holding me back. It was making me suffer from, you know, just not being at a school I wanted to be at, realizing that I would go to school, go to college for years and look back and what would I be able to talk about? Oh, I went to school, I got my degree, but like what memories will I create? I believe that at Morgan, at HBCU, I feel like there are so many more opportunities for me to flourish. I really believe that I am going to be a great student still. I believe that I'm going to be involved more. And of course, since it's in Maryland, I will be staying on campus. And I think just off the bat, staying on campus is going to be a whole different experience for me. It's constantly seeing what's going on, constantly being active. I feel like I'm gonna have more opportunities to get involved in things, um, things that are dedicated to black people. Like, <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny, but it's for real. I'm so glad that I took the risk. I'm so glad that I just dropped everything and went, you know, I left Seton Hall with no hesitation. And when I, how quick I did it showed me like, yeah, Maya, you really did not want to be there. And like I said, I'm just happy I did it. I've gotten um, DMs from a few minority students who attend Seton Hall and, you know, they explained to me like, congratulations, you know, because I'm thinking about transferring too. And, you know, I say to them, like, I support you 100%. Like, I know how you feel. Like, I get that we go to college for education, we want a degree, but you still want to, you know, enjoy it, you know, you really do. You want to socially, flourish socially as well as academically, you know. So I'm not saying that because I'm going to Morgan, I'm no longer going to be an introvert. I'm still a naturally reserved person, but once you get to know me, once I get to know you, I believe that I'm mad cool. Anybody who knows me, when I tell them, like, oh, when I'm in new environments, I'm a little shy and reserved. They're like, what? And I'm like, no, I really am. And they don't believe me because I talk a lot. I'm social. I'm loud. I'm this. I'm that. Like, seriously. But in new situations, I'm like, you know, so, but that's just who I am. So I'm not saying going to Morgan's going to change me who I am. But I just believe that I will have more of a desire to open up and, you know, just be involved and, I really look forward to it. And being as though I'm going to be away from home, you know, I'm not going to have my family. It definitely is going to, you know, open me up. So, like I said, I'm really excited. I'm going to be starting in January of 2020. 
I will be making like more videos on like my whole process and journey of like once I'm until I'm like fully there and once I'm fully there because there's still like things in the process going on you know finding out like where I'm going to be living what dorm all these different things that's still going on so I don't have too many details I don't even know yet exactly what they're classifying me as whether it's a freshman or sophomore but I don't even care because I'm just so I'm like whatever if I'm a little like delayed and you know I gotta do a semester like whatever I'm just glad that it's no longer I'm no longer at Seton Hall and that's just what it comes down to so I hope you guys enjoyed this video like I said like comment and subscribe I really appreciate it I appreciate all the support and bye